you know, usually like in football or basketball, they're playing, you know, all season long up to the highlight. And our Super Bowl is the first race of the year. Did a, just a uh, just an amateur road racer on the West Coast. So for me, this is like my Daytona 500. It's the culmination of a of a dream come true. This is the biggest sports car race in the United States, and it's probably the second biggest sports car race in the world. So it has a lot of tradition, and to be part of this, uh, it's 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 quite special. You know, the fans. I mean, they've been out here for weeks already. It's going to be over the weekend good 200,000 people here so it, the hype is pretty pretty big the pressure builds up the whole week and now you know you just want to get the race started it's been uh, quite a tough preparation we did not receive this Honda HPD car until about three weeks almost four weeks ago and it came in a million pieces drivers, it's new for the mechanics, uh, they don't know which screw to turn, which direction. We've been under tremendous time crunch, it was a lot of work, thousands and thousands of hours. You gotta have a pretty good group of people who get along well uh, to make this happen, otherwise, you know, if there's friction in between the boys, it just doesn't work. Started at 10.30 tomorrow morning, end up 10.30 tomorrow night, a 12 hour endurance contest with 65 cars in that time frame. We'll cover about 1,500 miles. Every driver's got to do a minimum of three hours out of the 12. That's a regulation, but we've got three really world-class and really respected drivers. Two Germans of Klaus Groff and Lucas Lohr, and the great Frenchman who thought it's going to be an IndyCar racing this year, Simon Pagano. For us as a driver, it's pretty easy. I mean, we, we get to play around with the best toys in the world. One of the highest tech cars in the world. The car weighs 25, 2600 pounds. About half of a street car with roughly twice the horsepower. Everything that you see on the car is completely carbon fiber, which is very strong, very light material. Our little Honda powered HPD makes about 550 horsepower on gasoline. We're fourth overall in the grid behind just three factory Audis. Audi, because they're a little bit faster, they use a little bit more fuel, and because of that, they're gonna have to stop a little bit more often during the race than we do. And so they've gotta put about three to four seconds a lap on us. And since they only put about a second on us in qualifying per lap, that's gonna be a tall order for them. So our little independent, hardworking team, we're really looking forward to having a good, solid race. I think the fans gonna enjoy a good show. It was a really a mess out there. I mean, 65 cars around this track uh, was really a handful. It's like a big, big traffic jam. In some parts of the racetracks, we are a good 100 miles quicker than all the other cars. The other cars go quick as well, don't get me wrong, but it's like a 747, and there's a lot of them, and you fly through it with the F-16. We were best petrol car in qualifying. So we knew we can probably run with the Audis and we were never more than one lap down. All drivers were very 
consistent and very quick and we stayed very close to the audio all the time. This is very much a team sport. It's just not drivers. We've got our crew chief, uh, Mike Seymour. We've got four engineers during the race. We're sending back in real time about 35 channels of information that's telling everything the car is doing. We know in the pits when a tire's going down if they should have a puncture. We can tell him to slow down before he can feel it in the car. Then of course we have about nine guys are involved in fitting the car, changing the tires, fueling the car and doing a complete driver change in about 35 seconds. Those 35 seconds are sheer pandemonium. Controlled chaos. can easily lose like four or five seconds during a pit stop. And if they can shave a couple seconds, it's high fives all the way around and everybody's really happy. Then you get a, a drink, a nice towel, and if you're very lucky, a nice massage. They'll go about, you know, an hour and a 45 or an hour 50, and then they'll get three hours approximately out. Remember, our cars go a football field a second when they're on the racetrack. The extreme lateral G-forces, like three and a half or four times, what your body weighs. So your helmet and your head doesn't weigh 25 pounds, it weighs four times that. And your neck's trying to hold that up, going around corners for a 12-hour period of time. And so they have to take time to recover. They work out all the kinks, they work out the lactic acid, get the blood flow working really well, and then they'll be back in. Even so you're not driving for 12 hours, you are driving for 12 hours because it's your car, my buddy's in the car, and if they are driving, I drive with them. There's so many things which can change in the race, and he needs to know that. We start 10.30, so by 2, 3 o'clock it's gonna be really hot, then it cools off and it goes into the night time. We were as fourth well, when I took it over, now we're back to third uh, behind the two Audis. During the midday hours we couldn't manage to do the same speed as the Audis, but uh, in the night time it was pretty good. We beat one at least. I think we have quite a, a lead over the other cars, more than one lap. So it's it's pretty comfortable. There's an hour to go and I think we are we are in a good position so that we can end up on the podium. It was a good day overall. I mean, if you look at the first 11 and a half hours uh, of Sebring, we actually uh, were looking golden. And unfortunately, we had a, a fuel problem at the end. We couldn't get any fuel in the car. It was a quick fix, and uh, we couldn't do anything else anyway. So we tried to go back out, thinking uh, maybe it would hold to the end, but uh, uh, I basically uh, caught fire. There was a massive fireball behind me and it was like daylight all of a sudden. So at uh, the last pit stop, which was 30 minutes before the end, we, uh, we, had, to, we had to stop. So unfortunately it's a, it's a disappointing end. There they are, your overall podium! Yes, I mean, tough break. I mean, uh, we did all we could to make it work and, and, and stay as close as we can, but you know, you gotta go all the way, you gotta make all the laps um, to, uh, to be on the podium at the end. Uh, we still got points for the LMS championship, which is very important to us. That's our goal, to win that championship. 
so we got second place there, uh, which is a very good start uh, for the year. I'll tell you, it was an amazing debut. They showed incredible speed from the get-go. Running as high as third overall late in the going. This is a team to be watching from. This organization with that car, absolutely spectacular. There it is, folks, your podium. And in the P1 category, Muscle Milk Picket Racing and Dyson. It's Muscle Milk Picket Racing. We are, uh, you know, a little David uh, against the Goldiath. Um, big Audi factory team so to run so close to them um, or race 11 hours 20 minutes uh, with a brand new car I don't think it's too bad uh, after all. You know it's racing at the end I mean it's the 12 hours of Sebring and anything can happen even in the last one last last minute actually so uh, you know it, it makes it uh, really tough for us today but the day we're gonna win it I think we'll be uh, even more pleased.